Hey guys, today we're going to be continuing watching the Bad Weapon Academy by Fish Stick on a Stick Gaming. So far, this series has been fantastic, and I cannot wait to jump into today's video. It revolves around the Palmson 6000, so I'm sure it's going to be awesome. So thank you so much to everybody who's been liking and commenting on those recent videos. I really, really appreciate the support. And with that being said, this is your first time stopping by the channel. Do not forget to hit that sub button, please, and thank you. And let's go ahead and jump into it. Hold on. Is that is that Uncle Dane's theme? Am I hearing that correctly? <laughs> Holy crap! It's Uncle Dane. Get the camera. <laughs> oh. Ironic. Welcome to Bad Weapon Academy. Nice! We take a look at the worst weapons TF2 has to offer, and I show you how to best utilize them. Today we're going to be looking at what can be considered Engineer's only bad weapon, the Pomsen 6000. Okay. I think this might be the most requested episode so far. And when some no-name YouTuber Engineer main suggested I take a look- Oh my god, Uncle Dane commented- oh man. This is- oh, this is just- this is awesome to see, man. It's really cool I to see. I figured I may as well give it a shot. And, oh dear god, it's awful. This is one of the most <laughs> awkward and clunky guns in the game. It's so unsatisfying. Even when I hit someone, and especially kill someone with this thing, I'm more surprised than I am pleased with myself. Mostly because when I do get a kill with this thing, it's because I got a random crit. This is extra surprising because I can't even fucking tell the difference between the crit projectile and the normal one. <laughs> it's like the loot crates were a gun. Surprise mechanics from a surprising mechanic. You really wouldn't think this thing is so bad just looking at the stats. In fact, if you're going by the weapon description alone, you might think this thing is downright unfair to fight. But that's where you'd be wrong. We have another situation where the weapon description doesn't tell the whole story. We'll start oh. off with what's actually listed. Like the other laser weapons such as the Righteous Bison and the Cow Mangler, this weapon does not have an oh, ammo pool. He's including Pokemon music again, and I know I've said this a few times in the other videos, but I just cannot get over it, man. Especially because he's using, like, the first couple of gins. Like, that music for Pokemon was so on point, man. So you can just shoot this thing forever. No ammo packs or dispensers acquired. You'll still have to reload, but we'll get to that. For Engineer, this really isn't a big deal at all. Since he's always hovering around ammo packs and dispensers to keep his buildings up and running, and those passively refill his ammo anyway. Instead of hitscan pellets like other shotguns, the Pompson fires a projectile. One of the few projectiles in the game that can't be deflected by pyros. If this projectile hits a medic, he'll lose up to 10% of his uber charge. Oh. And if it hits a spy, he'll lose up to 20% of his cloak. This oh. is dependent on your distance to the target. After 512 hammer units, it starts to drain less and less until you reach 1536 hammer units where it won't drain anything at all. It's also worth mentioning that the projectile first deals damage and then drains these effects. So if you hit a spy who is currently holding out the dead ringer, he'll still feign, although the length of time he can stay feigned will be lowered. It doesn't really matter too much because the speed boost the dead ringer gives means he'll likely be able to get away very easily. The last stat listed is that this gun only deals 20% damage to buildings, oh. similar to the other laser weapons. That Again, is, mm, this is sort still. of a nothing stat. Engineer versus engineer exchanges are pretty rare since they're commonly more towards- You know what, you're, you're so right. Yeah, I mean, like it matters. Like, you're not like running into engineer all the time 24-7 as engineer. The backline of the team, offense or defense. If you do come across an engineer building like a dispenser or a teleporter, it's just as easy to start upgrading it yourself, so to speak. Or just spam it out with the pistol. And that's all the description says, so wow. let's talk about what it doesn't say, because there's a lot. Oh. First of all, you have a reduced clip count. Four shots instead of six. You also have reduced close range damage and a reduced fire rate. Oh. The stock shotgun will do 90 damage at point blank max ramp up, assuming all of the pellets connect. And the Pompson will do, at most, 72 damage. The stock shotgun also has a fire rate of one shot every 0.625 seconds. Wow. And the Pompson has a fire rate of one shot every 0.8 seconds. For reference, that's the same attack speed as most stock melee weapons, including your wrench, which does similar damage at point blank range, is quite frankly easier to hit, doesn't need to reload, 
and has a much higher rate of randomly one-shotting the enemy. And finally, let's talk about that projectile speed. 1200 hammer units a second is just barely faster than the stock rocket launcher. And the stock rocket launcher makes up for that relatively slow speed by doing what can generously be called fuckloads of damage <laughs> on top of being a mobility tool that lets soldiers close the distance. Also, I love the way his like gun is looking right now. It's got like this that green skin on it or whatever's going on. Like not the not the lights, obviously not the, the festive lights things, but the, the actual like greenish color on the gun it's looks really cool. To get the full benefit of its insane ramp up. And it also gives splash damage so we can hit multiple targets at once, or at the very least still deal significant damage even if you don't hit your target dead center. So the oh. next time you're playing soldier, don't rocket jump at all, and only try to hit enemies with center mass direct rockets, and you'll get a good idea of what shooting this thing is like. On a front closer to home, this is twice as slow as the bolts fired by the rescue ranger. Really? Now, even on the righteous bison, the slow projectile speed is actually something of a boon because that projectile penetrates targets, meaning it's more effective on retreating enemies as it hits the same opponent multiple times as they're running away. Not the case here. You hit someone, anyone, even your fucking teammates once, and the projectile is gone. Yeah, you know how it's kind of annoying when one of your teammates randomly jumps in the path of your rocket and stuffs it? Yeah, imagine that, but with the same consistency as two people standing inside of each other trying to melee someone. Oh. It's awful. Also, I can't find any data on this from the wiki, but I've noticed the small delay when you press the fire button versus when the projectile finally leaves. And, you know, I hate that the weapon is, like, you know, this kind of not so good. Because as far as the way the gun looks, like, the way that it's, like, cosmetic, like, how visually pleasing it is, it's a really, really cool-looking weapon. It looks like something that would be on, like, Destroy All Humans or, like, Black Ops Zombies or something. Like, the, the gun itself actually just looks so cool. I wish it was just so, so much better than this. Yeah. It makes the Pomsen feel extremely awkward to fire, and overall, using this gun is just like you're playing the game in slow motion. Slow mm, firing Yeah, it speed, does. It does look like he's like firing really slow compared to normal. Slow projectile, less damage, and a lot of reloading. So, to recap, the actual stats of this gun are as follows. An unlimited ammo pool. It fires a slow projectile that can drain Uber and Cloak. It deals 80% less damage to buildings. It deals 20% less damage to players at close range. Man. It has a 33% smaller clip and a 20% slower firing speed. Jesus Christ. When comparing all the engineer primaries together, you can actually see that the Pompson and the Rescue Ranger are quite a lot alike. They both have a support oh, element, yeah. they're both projectile weapons, and they both have reduced damage and clip size. Though the Pompson easily loses out in the utility here, because maintaining your buildings, and the buildings of your fellow engineers, from a distance is always going to be useful. While the Pompson has an upside that's only useful here in direct combat against 2 out of 9 classes. On a weapon that is not nearly as suitable for combat as its contemporaries. Okay. And keep in mind, this is the main point of the Rescue Ranger. It has very limited combat capabilities, but just how much better is the Pompson in this regard? Well, we've established that the Pompson does 72 damage at point-blank range, and over in the Rescue Ranger's corner, it does 60 at point-blank. At long range, the Pompson will do 32 damage, and the Rescue Ranger does 21. These weapons Dang. do very similar damage, and the Rescue Ranger is not designed with combat being a priority, and yet it has a superior firing speed and double the projectile speed compared to the Pompson. On top of being the single best choice for a defensive engineer setup, at the cost of a measly 12 to 11 damage. It's fucking pathetic. At the end of the day, most of what this gun offers is just sort of useless because there are so few situations where the two real upsides come into play. Having no I would say, like, it just doesn't look like it's, like, that good compared to the other weapons you could be using. Ammo pool on Engineer's primary is really not a big deal. Even the Rescue Ranger, with a severely reduced ammo pool, is still, arguably, the best engineer primary in the majority of defensive situations. Dang. And for everything else, the stock shotgun does the job better 9 times out of 10. Your projectile not being able to be reflected is pretty irrelevant when the shotgun alternatives are hit-scan anyway, and they have a chance of two-shotting a pyro, especially the panic attack, and the Frontier Justice can one-shot them with a revenge crit. 
the only time this outclasses the shotguns in damage is at longer ranges, since it has a flat rate of 32 damage even at the longest range possible. But oh hey, Dang. guess what? Then the upsides you get with this thing are worthless, and it's so fucking slow that you'll need to shoot someone about three years before you play on the projectile actually hitting <laughs> someone. About three years. Only... That is the only, like, the biggest downside I'm seeing here is definitely the firing speed. It just, it does feel like, it's just watching this clip here alone of him playing, just makes it feel like he's playing the game so slow, unfortunately. Enemies you have a chance of hitting at this range are very injured targets retreating in a straight line, revved up heavies, and snipers. And I don't have to tell you that getting in a sniper duel where you do 32 damage and he does 150 is a really bad idea a lot of the time. And in the range where the gun actually gives you a decent bonus, the shotgun performs the whole killing people job so much better. I mean no exaggeration when I say I've reliably killed more people with the rescue ranger than this thing. I think this gun Dang. is meant to be a sort of mid-range spamming type weapon. It's not as good at the shotgun at close range, but it's better at long range where bullet spread and damage fall off will hinder the shotguns. But it just doesn't work because the damage is still dog shit regardless, even if you do manage to hit someone with this slow ass projectile. At the range where it's better than the shotguns, it's just too hard to hit anyone with, and at close range it's completely outclassed. So at close ranges, as far as medics are concerned, this is only an upgrade to the shotgun in a situation where you get the drop on a medic that has full uber, since he won't be able to react to your shot by activating his charge. But at its best, that's only 10%. Mm. So if either you don't follow up on your shot, or if your team doesn't follow up on it, then the medic can get his charge back very easily. So you need to time it so perfectly to the point where he's about to use his uber and is about to be caught out in a situation where he thought he'd be safe due to his invincibility. Like if he's walking in front of a sentry nest or something. Jesus Christ. That was a very cool point, cosmetic. You're honestly better off just engineering behind the team, popping the medic with a couple of shotgun shots before he gets the chance to get his charge up. Or hell, just fucking smack him with your wrench. Or just In smack fact, him with your wrench. I even tried an engineering with this thing to try and get a drop on medics before they could get their charge up. This is only viable if you're in the last stretches of a round before a pub push, as you'll spend a lot of your time dead trying this. Especially on defense, where your respawn nice. timer can last about half as long as it takes a medic to charge full uber. And again, you can just as easily kill the medic or even just force him with Dang. any other shotgun. Now, if you get the drop on a medic using the Kritzkrieg, Vaccinator, or Quick Fix, you can drain that charge a little bit faster since they'll still take damage. But 10% really isn't all that much. And in order to accomplish that, you're getting close to a medic currently using a Crits or a Quick Fix charge on their pocket. Yeah, if you're getting a drop on him at the range where this actually makes a difference, you're better off just going for a random wretch crit. Especially against the, fuck you, my pocket has four <laughs> charges of effective invincibility against whatever damage type your class will exclusively be able to deal that when put together last longer than a stock uber. Vaccinator. A real bitch about this is there's <laughs> all these downsides for slightly inconveniencing and delaying the enemy you're shooting at instead of actually killing them. So this gun is balanced around not killing your target, aka... Losing. At the losing. range where this gun is actually effective, if you don't kill your target, you're probably gonna die to them as an engineer. Maybe this gun is meant to be kinda like the Sydney Sleeper, where it isn't the best at killing people on its own, but it's really meant to be supportive so your teammates can follow up on your shots. But it only works to that effect in very specific situations against two classes. It's not like I wouldn't mind seeing a supportive shotgun. I think the possibility for something really interesting is there for Engineer. Realistically, the only way this gun will ever help you out is against spies. Spies are just about the only class who are able and willing to even get close to you if you have your sentry up and running, meaning you're actually able to make the full effect of the upside against their cloak assuming you can actually fucking hit them. <laughs> this really only works in highly defensive situations where you're having trouble with a lot of spies. The kind where you'd want to bust out the short circuit and southern hospitality to have an easier time tracking them down. The Pompson is just too weak against normal enemies to actually bother using it in a more aggressive, battle ng situation. Aside from those across-the-map sniper picks who you're able to chip away at or across-the-map random crits, 
Any kill you get with this thing, you'll get more reliably with any shotgun, and you'll have more fun doing it. If cloak spies are something you're having a lot of trouble with, then using this thing might be in your best interest. Since the big downside of the rescue ranger in these types of defensive situations is that you can't properly defend yourself against spies nearly as effectively as with the shotguns. And even against other players who manage to close the distance on you, it will still do more damage than the rescue ranger. Not that that's a very high bar to get over, but this is the only only situation where the yeah it just seems like if, you, if you're playing against spies this is this would probably be a great weapon to use but other than that i just don't see like too much of a reason to use anything it else just don't even bother now you might be thinking what about mvm surely the Uber oh yeah what about mvm useful there right well maybe but even then it's situational it's best used against single giant medics rather than the groups of smaller ones because it oh. doesn't even have a projectile penetration upgrade, meaning you can only hit one medic at a time. I was going to say, yeah, I guess it depends on how many spies and medics are, like, beside each other, I guess. I don't know, like, you know, the, it is kind of so right. slow. <laughs> and by that point, your sniper, pyro, or demo will have killed them all in one shot already. Oh. But have you ever been in a situation where you're trying to kill a giant quick-fix medic, but right as he's about to die, he pops Uber and you have to start all over again? Oh. Well, that is when the Pompson is at its most useful, since you can put an immediate stop to that at very little risk to yourself. Oh, so you I see. You do sacrifice the utility of the Rescue Ranger, though, but honestly, MVM is more than playable without it. If it did have a projectile penetration upgrade, though, it would be way more worth using especially with crit canteens against big group of robots. That would actually be pretty cool. Dang. I honestly think the only reason it doesn't have this is because the gun used to have a penetrating projectile when MVM was first made, but when they removed that attribute, they forgot to update MVM to compensate. So, yeah, Whoa. fix that shit. <laughs> so I tried it. with this one, guys. I really did. On paper, it really doesn't seem that bad. But once you read between the lines and find out what this thing's all about, it just falls apart completely. What can even be done about this thing to make it usable? Well, I guess that depends on what direction you want to take this in. It's an interesting situation because I feel like the cloak and uber draining on this gun is only fair because everything else about the weapon is so trash. If it were any good at all, or if it were buffed in a way that affects a large portion of classes by removing meters on all kinds of items like Mad Milk, the Banners, the Demo Knight Shields, it would be horribly unfun to fight, so I'd say scrap it all together. Yeah, we're getting rid of the one attribute that actually makes this gun even remotely worth using. This should be interesting. This kind of puts us at square one with this gun. We can do anything we want with it now. I see two paths that are about the most reasonable. For okay. one path, if we're sticking with the mid-range, decent damage spam gun, then I'd say bump up the firing speed, projectile yeah. speed, and the... Crit. That's what I was saying. That's my main thing. It's just like, give it more firing speed, man. It just looks like it is just too slow. ...size to be on par with stock, but the damage can stay the same. That way, it's worse than stock at close range, but better at long range. A fair trade-off, I think. It certainly would be if you could actually fucking hit people with it. If you want to go <laughs> another route, you can make it more support-oriented. Maybe give it a sort of cow mangler super shot attribute, where enemies hit by it are hit with a mini crit and marked for death, for example, on top of the projectile and firing speed bonuses I just mentioned. Oh. But you can keep the clip size lower. Just make sure that the super shot projectile actually looks visibly different. Yeah. For either of these, you could also add back the projectile penetration aspect. With the super shot pass specifically, this could be pretty effective being fired down a choke point. I think how fast the projectile should be is up in the air. Definitely faster than it is now. Maybe the super shot can keep the same speed it currently has to make it fair and easier to dodge, while the normal shot is closer to rescue ranger speed. Then just let me festivize and we are good to go. The Pompson is finally usable. At the end of the day, I really just want this weapon to be good for more than one very specific situation like it currently is now. Yeah, it's it just looks so cool. The Enforcer episode. Actually, it's the same story as a lot of episodes. <laughs> mm. I'd like to apologize to all the NG mans out there who thought that maybe I could do something more with this, but nope. It just makes your turtling slightly more effective against one very specific threat. I guess in that aspect, it's very fitting that I paired it with the Southern Hospitality. But hey, at least that functions as a normal fucking wrench. Hopefully, <laughs> one day, this laser gun will actually be worth using. Until then, though, go out there and trade this laser weapon for an 11-year-old's first unbox unusual, and tell him Fish <laughs> sent ya.
Ah, oh, more Pokemon music. <laughs> He's like, no, that's not me. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Okay, that was the next part in the Bad Weapon Academy, of course, about the Palm Sim 6000. That was awesome, though. It does kind of suck that the weapon isn't really that great. Like, there's not really too much more you could do with it, honestly. It just seems like there's so much better choices to pick when it comes to trying to find something like that. It's just better weapons to pick. But it looks really cool. It's one of the coolest looking ones, in my opinion. Uh, but I enjoyed this video, of course. As always, I'll put the original video link down below if you want to go watch it for yourself. And if you haven't already, please do, man. Go support this uh, this creator's channel because they are awesome. If you haven't already, it'd be awesome to this video with a like. It really helps out the channel here. If there's anything else you need to see me react to, you're more than welcome to put it down in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to put it on the list to make. So that's all I got for you. I will see you in the next video. Do not forget, man, it's Work Army for life.